Welcome Cogs. I was thinking back to a project I worked on a few years ago. I worked with some artists to make a kinetic sculpture, and as part of the design we wanted to have a spine which was fully flexible, prehensile by which I mean it could be driven to bend and flex in different directions, and also have a cam follower system running through the core which drove some hinges to move in a wave-like fashion. Tentacle mechanisms are fairly well established and have been used quite a bit in films and TV. I think I remember buying a course on how to design one on stanwinstonschool.com. Basically, you have an inextensible yet flexible core, multiple segments clamped at intervals along the core, and cables work in opposition to bend the whole thing at different angles. I immediately couldn't use this mechanism because I wanted to use the core to drive the hinges as mentioned, so instead I designed these gimbal-like hinges that would permit rotation in two axes and keep the centre open. Now I just needed a drive shaft that could rotate in two axes while transmitting a rotation and I found that a 3D printed TPU strip with a square profile was perfect to drive the mechanism. I always thought the flexible drive shaft was a cool idea, if you could drive a series of simple hinges then why not a gearbox to perform some more complex task? So that's when I decided to try and build a mechanical centipede. So the idea was pretty simple. Design a module which takes a rotational input and drives some legs. Copy and paste this pair of legs, I guess, 50 times and drive it all with a single motor and flexible drive shaft like before. In addition, use a cable and pulley to steer it left and right. I saw a similar project by James Bruton again, he had a pretty much the same idea but on a much larger scale and using some different types of walking linkages. For my legs I used the Clan linkage which is a design for a series of hinge joints and couplers that takes a single consistent rotational input and produces a natural animal like movement at the foot. It was invented and patented by Joseph Clan about 30 years ago. And the idea is that by having two of these legs opposing each other and also half a cycle out of phase, one leg will always be touching the ground and the height of the robot should stay the same as it walks. I'd love to say that I went in depth on how each linkage and joint is defined mathematically, but I actually just approximated each one by eye and played around with joint animations until it looked right. Take that maths. I realised that one of my design crutches is using screws as hinges. Anyone could tell you that it's a bad idea because all the ridges of the threads cause friction and wear away the bore of your hinge. But it is convenient and that's why I used them in my eyes, my heart, my mouth, my fox. Time for me to be a little bit less lazy. Firstly, I tried using these binder pins which have a smooth outer surface but threaded interior. They're not really designed to be used as a hinge though, so the outer diameter is pretty inconsistent. They're also bulky and heavy. This was around the time that Bamboo Lab sent me a brand new X1 Carbon, so I thought I could try out some different printing techniques to get a better hinge joint. I designed my leg to have multiple 2mm steel pins embedded inside of the 3D print. Now there also needs to be some clearance inside the leg to allow the other components to move and rotate, so this wasn't a simple case of pausing the print, popping them in and then resuming. I had to print thin pieces which were put into the print at the same time of the pins, which were then printed over and became built into the part, with the pin embedded inside. This meant that, after some pauses and on-bed assembly, the full leg design came off the print bed fully hinged up and movable, and then I used snap fit pins to attach the body. There was a lot of trial and error to get this to work, I messed up several times by putting the pin in at the wrong depth, putting things on backwards and being too ham-fisted and knocking bits off. But the X1 Carbon actually lets you select components to skip during the print. I don't really understand what wizardry they do to separate out the different components of the G-code, but I was very impressed and it's already saved a lot of my prints. I designed a gearbox. There were seven gears in total. The driving gear, which drives another spare gear, which is connected to another gear, to ensure that both legs are moving in the same direction. And then a pair of bevel gears to translate the rotation 90 degrees. In order to have the driving gear have a hole through the centre for the flexible drive shaft and still be able to assemble it, I added a pause to the G-code and put in the driving gear and sealed it in, no screws required and plenty of space for the shaft. I tested with a screwdriver and got excited, the motion looked smooth and natural and so I started printing a whole load of new modules. Predictably, the Carbon X1 made light work of all these components. I made a variation for the front module which would house a motor and started testing. Too weak a motor. Redesigned, reprinted, broke it, material too weak. 
switched from PLA to Bamboo Labs ASA, broke it. The housing was too thin, redesigned, bulked it up, reprinted, and the gears were not gearing. So I decided to start from scratch. I think that although the first version looked very smooth and natural, the main reason is because there was so much slop in each joint and gear that things moved pretty realistically just because they were kind of swinging like a pendulum. The gears were not being held straight enough which allowed them to tilt, wedge, jam and eventually break. I also had some concerns that the centre of gravity was very high so I made this one shorter and wider. Since I had the idea to insert the driving gear midprint, I wanted to take it a step further and see if I could insert all of the gears into one unifying frame piece. Doing so would allow me to get rid of all the remaining fasteners in the design, reducing weight and room for error make assembly much easier and the main reason I wanted to try it out was just to try it out. I then took it a step further and rather than putting the gears straight into the frame, I firstly printed guide plates in ABS since it's low friction and then put the plates in mid print while printing the gears and then put the geared sub assemblies into the frame assembly mid print and so three sub assemblies consisting of three stages of prints within prints were combined into this sort of ultimate fractal meg print. So as cool or more like ridiculous as that sounds, it didn't work first time because I knocked it off the bed and it was too difficult to assemble mid print and I kind of hated the way it looked so boxy and its proportions were all off and so it went into the bin with V1. I wanted to take all of my lessons learned and make a way better design. I went back to the legs and changed the snaps fits to be bigger so they'd be stronger yet easier to clip in. I built the pegs into the bearing plates themselves to reduce the part count and combat misalignment and set up all of the prints in Bamboo Studio to have a concentric style top and bottom surface to further facilitate smooth rotation. I also made all of the rods and connectors longer so that they'd stay straighter and now that the bearing plates had these long protrusions I had to get creative about how I printed the gears in order to support them while I printed around them. I made it to be assembled upside down which meant that the plate slid in at a more favourable angle and made it look less boxy and gross. I anxiously watched the plates getting sealed into the frame and was very happy to see that it worked. The whole thing was quite stiff, but I got it to work, wearing it in, and I broke it. This is one of the main reasons not to design things to be print in place, because replacing components can become much more complicated. I still managed to see it move with the drill and it was looking pretty promising, so this time I designed the module to house a motor and printed all of the gears and housing in ASA while the bearing plates were still ABS. ASA is a bit stronger but ABS is lower friction. It does kind of defeat the purpose of sealing them in mid print since the ASA won't properly adhere to the ABS as well as if it was all one material. But it's a cool experiment. Now why couldn't I use the AMS, the automated material system, to print the ASA and ABS together in one print? I did test out the Carbon X One's AMS on some fun stuff, link in description, to print different colours of PLA with some impressive results. And although the printing temperature of ABS and ASA is close enough and it would technically be possible, the reason I didn't do it is because I wanted to print the bearing plates flat on the bed and in the mechanism they're all oriented at different angles. Printing with your bores parallel to the build plate allows you to get a more accurate circle with continuous lengths of extruded material rather than steps, which makes for a much better bushing. It very nearly detached from the bed while I was sealing in the bearing plates, but it survived and I had begun testing. Still had a lot of misalignment issues and friction, and so I tried to wear it in for a while, and then I really tried to wear it in, and I also tried lengthening the gears for extra engagement, but I think the problems were a little more fundamental. I think the main reason it wasn't working was because I essentially turned a normal gearbox inside out. Normally there's a housing outside the gears and shafts which run through the centre of the gears and support them from both sides. I in my infinite wisdom tried to put the housing in the centre of the gears and have the shafts built into the gears themselves. So because they were only supported in one position they could flex more, misaligning, wedging and causing jams and spectacular disassemblies. Now one big glaring factor some of you might have noticed is that the clan linkage is kind of designed to operate both of the opposing legs from the same shaft. I really wanted to see how far I could push the limits of a 3D printed gearbox and that's why I went with a kind of convoluted transmission system and legs angled outwards. 
but if I hadn't done that, I could have simply used a single set of bevel gears, a shaft between both legs, and the whole thing would have been so much simpler. So as much as this was a very cool look at some alternative 3D printing techniques, I think the design for V4 is fairly clear. A single set of bevel gears driving both legs from the same shaft, and a 3D printed gearbox with better support from both sides. I also want to make the whole thing smaller because it's just so much more exciting to me to pack a lot of engineering into a tight space rather than let the design blur out until the scale is convenient. If you want to buy a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon just like the one featured in this video which I highly recommend, or a more affordable version like the A1 Mini, please use my affiliate link in the description, it means I get a little bit of kickback which really helps out with keeping the channel running. And an even better way to support me is to join my Patreon page where I post early project updates and sneak peeks and in fact I'd like to get your guys opinion on what type of content you'd like to see on there. I also finally got around to updating the sticker packs I send out to my patrons with my new logo design and I also made a commemorative bionic hand sticker which will be available for a limited time only. Thank you very much for supporting me guys and thanks everyone for watching and see you in the next video.